this Wednesday was the 4th of July, and I realized uh, I've never done a 4th of July sermon. I always missed it. And so this week I wanted to talk about the 4th of July. You know, for mainly America. Uh, don't worry, this won't be long or weird. It might be weird, but this won't be that long. Um, and it, what is, one of the things about America that, that stands out you know, is, is probably best to summarize in a show I saw called The Wire. The Wire is a show about uh, crime in Baltimore. Now, the show is a, it's, it's considered one of the best TV shows ever made. Why? Because it was just well done. But the opening scene to this show, it's a five-season show, and the opening scene is a conversation between a police officer, an undercover police officer, and a man who is in a community. And a man has just been murdered. So they're at a homicide scene. And the officer who's white is talking to the man who's African American. And the officer's trying to get information from the African American man, you know, as to what happened. And the man says, Well, I'm not going to go to the precinct, I'm not doing this. And so the conversation consists of this. So what happened? And they realize that the, the, the man tells the officer, Well, they should not have killed this man. And the officer says, Who? And the guy's name is Snot Boogie. That's the guy's name. They killed him. And so the officer find asked, why did they kill this man? And they said, well, he took money from when the other men were playing dice on the corner. So they played dice on the corner every Friday. And the man would wait until a lot of money was put on the ground. And every Friday, the man would scoop up the money and run away. And every Friday, the group of people playing dice would chase the man and beat him up. But every, this became a ritual that every Friday, the moment a lot of money got put on the cement, the man, snap of it, would scoop it up and run away. And he would get beat up for it afterwards. But they killed him this time. And, and the man says to the officer, they should not have done that. The officer says, you're right. But then the officer has a real question, a legitimate question. I, I gotta know. If you know that every Friday the man is going to scoop up the money and run away every Friday, why do you let him play? And the man says to the officer, it's a miracle. You've got to let him play. And that summarizes. America. It's America. You got to still let the man play. When I think about uh, what makes this country great, uh, this is another recent TV. I know y'all might think all of that pastor does watch TV. It's not true. Um, it's another show, Newsweek, uh, written by the man who wrote A um, uh, Few Good Men. You know, and he, 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 there's a sequence in this show where a character is saying, America's number one. Why do we say America's number one? And he goes through a list of statistics on how America is not number one. We don't have the best math score. We don't have the best, you know, this. We don't have the best, okay. But there's still this idea that America is number one. When the Olympics come around, America usually wins the most gold medals. And that usually defines America as number one. But then it's just, what makes America so great? Why do people come here? Why here? Opportunity, freedom. Sure. Even though you may not love this country because it's not a perfect country, because it isn't a perfect country. It's weird. But there's still freedom and there's opportunity. And there still is deeply at its finest a sense that this is America and you've got to let him play. You get the sense that if you're the minority, if you're the outsider, this is a place where it's America, man, and you've got to let him play. Play, and it could be the you that is trying to play all along. And that promise is what, at its finest, makes this country so wonderful. Freedom. When I think about this passage, this is a beautiful passage, but it's also a controversial passage. If you know this, I don't know if your Bible says, but your Bible, like these Bibles, might have a little bracket that says something very weird. The earliest and most reliable manuscripts and other ancient witnesses do not have John 7, 53 through 8, 11. <laughs> Your Bible might also have that little bracket. Yeah. This passage.
passage of scripture, for some reason, it's the only one in scripture that has a bracket. For some reason, people are uncomfortable with this passage. And when they started translating the Bible, because the Bible wasn't originally written in English. I know you all know this, but I just got to make this clear. Jesus wasn't speaking English. Uh, he was speaking Aramaic and possibly some Hebrew, you know, but he wasn't speaking English. When they translated in English, as the translations kept going, for some reason, they had to make this clear that this passage might not have been in the quote original manuscript. This passage was troubling. One of the reasons this passage is troubling is because it seems that Jesus condones adultery. Think about it. This is a beautiful passage. And I don't know where you put yourself. Do you identify as the Pharisee? And I know in church we're never going to say we identify as the Pharisee, but deep down we might. You know, I know I sometimes I do.